Medistand. Understanding Medicine. I'm Professor Aziz Rahman, and this is the fourth lecture in the series of rheumatic heart diseases. We have discussed some basic concepts about valvular heart diseases, and then we have a detailed lecture on uh, mitral stenosis, and then another one on mitral regurgitation. I hope you have watched those videos and had come here. I think if that is the case, you will understand this one better because some of the terminology, some of the concept which I have explained earlier will not be repeated here. So we are going to talk about a condition called aortic stenosis, a self-explanatory a condition where aortic valve is narrowed. We will also cover very briefly a condition which is similar to aortic stenosis, although in that the valve is normal, uh, but there is symptoms similar to the, those of aortic stenosis. And then very briefly, we will also cover pulmonary stenosis in the same lecture because we cannot afford to have another lecture on pulmonary stenosis. Now, this is the normal structure of the valve. You can see uh, the aortic valve as well as pulmonary valve, they are tricuspid. Don't confuse it with the tricuspid valve, which is situated between the right atrium and the right ventricle. Here, this is the, we, we refer to these valves, the aortic and pulmonary as tricuspid valves because they have three cusps. In some cases, uh, they may, these two cusps, they may remain fused congenitally and this could be a bicuspid aortic valve. Now, why I'm sh showing this? Because this is one of the etiologies of aortic stenosis. In our part of the world, still rheumatic is the commonest, but in the developed countries, because they have more or less eliminated rheumatic valvular heart disease, so in them, it is usually the congenital. But this congenital bicuspid aortic valve disease definitely exists in our country also. So you need to be familiar with this one also. So let's move on and discuss this topic. Etiology of aortic stenosis may be congenital. You just note down that the sequence is now changed. It could be rheumatic or it could be congenital, but in the literature you will find congenital as number one. But in our country, I think the rheumatic is still perhaps the commonest. And note down, if somebody has rheumatic mitral valve disease, uh, rheumatic aortic disease, this is very likely that that patient would also have rheumatic mitral valve disease. So that is a clue actually. It is very unlikely to have rheumatic aortic stenosis with normal uh, mitral valve. So if mitral valve is actually normal, it could definitely very well be then congenital. Then there's a condition called senile. You know, every structure of the body wears off. Aortic valve, since it is a high pressure system, pressure in the left ventricle and aorta is very high as compared to the same on the right side. So with the time, these valves, they may degenerate. And those patients who were actually born with bicuspid aortic valve, but were not having symptoms later on, they may become symptomatic or maybe just age related. And it is also not a very rare condition at all. Then Hockham is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. This condition we will discuss in greater detail when we talk about cardiomyopathies. But here I would just briefly mention because the clinical features are very similar to those of aortic stenosis. Uh, this is the aortic valve which is really, really bad. You are looking at the aortic valve from the aorta side. This is the, the, the annulus and this is the cusp. Normally you should be able to identify three nice, crisp, thin cusp, but this is all jumbled up and you just see one uh, distorted orifice and this is all the aortic valve which is I think this is surely rheumatic because it's very very badly thickened. So this is of course an autopsy finding. We do not want uh, our patient to go to that stage that the autopsy would be needed. 
Now, pathophysiology, I think, let's take it from here. Uh, there is scarring because of rheumatic process and that leads to progressive narrowing of aortic valve. We are discussing aortic stenosis. So there could be concomitant aortic regurgitation also, but here we will just focus on aortic stenosis, assuming that patient has got pure aortic stenosis. So there is thickening and that would lead to left ventricular outflow obstruction. This is an abbreviation, left ventricular outflow obstruction and when there is left ventricular outflow obstruction so left ventricle will find it more and more difficult to pump blood into the aorta so that might sometimes result into syncope now what is the normal thing and this syncope typically occurs during exertion normally when we are doing some exertion our cardiac output increases and there is a vasodilatation also both things occur together. There is peripheral vasodilatation because our body needs more blood and there is increased cardiac output uh, because again our body needs more uh, blood. But in this situation when we do exercise and with the valve uh, stenosed then there will be peripheral vasodilatation because autonomic nervous system will actually dilate vessels but there would not be proportionate rise in cardiac output there may not be any card increase in the cardiac output because the valve is stenosed so there is disparity between the the cardiac output which is generated and the cardiac output which is needed so because of this disparity the blood pressure actually may drop suddenly and these patients they may develop syncope so somebody with valvular heart disease if that patient gives symptoms of syncope that occurs only during exertion consider aortic stenosis and this actually phenomenon has uh, a, a, a prognostic value also prognostic, prognostic value also somebody with syncope in aortic stenosis the life expectancy is average five years so five years when it comes to life expectancy is short duration so don't waste time i think act at this stage now there is left ventricle hypertrophy what kind concentric in left in in mitral regurgitation it was basically dilatation of left ventricle here it is concentric concentric means that muscle wall left ventricular wall they thicken at the expense of uh, left ventricular cavity so the cavity is actually smaller and the the the, uh, the wall of the ventricle is thicker so this kind of hypertrophy is called hype uh, the con concentric hypertrophy on x-ray chest there may not be significant cardiomegaly now what is this uh, concentric hypertrophy important for it is going to cause ischemia you know when there is hypertrophy the muscle mass has increased in size muscle cell might have also grown increasing oxygen requirement but capillaries have not proliferated further capillaries can't grow like that so all patients with concentric hypertrophy would have some degree of ischemia so they may actually have ischemic symptoms in the form of angina so if somebody with valvular aortic stenosis at maybe young age develops angina pain that would signify that the disease has got further worse and now life expectancy at this stage is three years so that means new year we're closer to the end point i think that means some valuable time has been wasted here if condition not addressed not treated things will go further worse then let, there will be left ventricular failure now here there is no left ventricular failure because left ventricle is trying to compensate for the increase after load left ventricle is hypertrophing is hypertrophied and is trying to generate more and more systolic pressure to overcome this left ventricular outflow obstruction but there is a limit to which left ventricle can adapt and can 
hypertrophy, so ultimately left ventricular will fail. Now, if somebody develops left ventricular failure in response to aortic stenosis, that means the condition has gone real, real far and the life expectancy is less than two years. Of course, this is a rough idea. Patient can develop complications, patient can develop some uh, other problem and uh, this natural history may become faster. I can't imagine anything happening which will slow down the natural history, but something can go wrong and the uh, this progression of the disease will become faster. Now, if there is left ventricle failure, not only death is very gross, actually no treatment will work. Even replacement of valve here is not going to change the prognosis because you have removed the obstruction, but left ventricle is dilated so much that it is unable to generate any, any uh, force. Of course, there is no line where we define that this way, no operation, this way operation. Surgeon will evaluate the case and decide if the patient can benefit from the surgery. Of course, as we moving away from the initial point, we are actually losing our options. So it is best to act here. Now, in the physical findings, there is a characteristic pulse called anadicrotic pulse or anacrotic pulse simply and this would refer to actually the examination of the carotid uh, not you will not be able to appreciate it on the radial we hardly ever now spend so much time with the patient but um, uh, this used to be the routine if you examine the carotid pulse you will lose you will, you will notice that the second uh, notch the, uh, the notch is uh, of the, is lost it's called anacrotic Apex beat, there may be sustained heave. That means when you put your hand on the precordium, there will be lifting of your hand because there is very strong left ventricular contraction and it is going to be sustained because of left ventricular outflow obstruction. The systole is likely to be longer. And so the lift is likely to be longer. So this is called sustained heave. To differentiate it from unsustained heave, which we will see, which we will see in aortic uh, regurgitation. In hard sound, there may be soft aortic component because second sound is created by closure of the aortic valve, and th that will be affected, and the soft, the second sound will be soft, and there may be reverse splitting of second sound. This is interesting, and I'll explain in one of the slides. But most characteristic of aortic stenosis is this murmur. This murmur is very hard to miss. I think even somebody with limited experience uh, should be able to pick up this murmur and all its features. And I will explain the features and I think the diagnosis of aortic stenosis, uh, I think is relatively easy if you know this murmur. Now this is how uh, this there is a reverse splitting. Uh, this is interesting. I think I hope I'm able to explain to you how this reverse splitting occurs. This is the normal second sound, first aortic component, then pulmonary component. You all know all this. The both are very close to each other, but first aortic component, then the pulmonary component. And what happens during inspiration? They there is uh, the aortic component comes what happens in inspiration the venous turn to the right heart increases and venous turn to the left heart is actually reduced because imagine an inspiration intrathoracic pressure comes down more blood from outside is sucked into the chest so right sided venous return is increased so right ventricular filling will be increased so right ventricular systole will be slightly prolonged and just the opposite is happening on the left side because of negative intrathoracic pressure more blood will stay in the lung capillaries and less will go to the left heart so the left ventricular filling will be less than the usual and left ventricular systole will be uh, over even quicker so in a normal person, there is 
द स्प्लिटिंग ऑफ द सेकंड साउंड इन इंस्पिरेशन देर इज वाइडनिंग देर इज वाइडनिंग ऑफ द स्प्लिट वाई बिकॉज द एटो कॉम्बिनेट विच कम्स बिफोर the second the pulmonary component comes even earlier and the pulmonary component which comes after the aorta component comes even late okay so that is why there is widening of uh, there is splitting of second sound during inspiration in normal healthy people we are yet discussing normal healthy people okay during inspiration increase the venous turn to the right heart further delays pulmonary component and reduce venous turn to the left heart makes left ventricular systole even shorter and becoming bringing the second sound the aorta component even earlier so the difference is increase and there is splitting now let's imagine the a case of aortic stenosis because in aortic stenosis left ventricle takes much longer to complete its systole because it has to overcome uh, the aortic pressure left ventricular outflow uh, pressure uh, pressure because of the stenosis so left ventricular systole will be prolonged the aortic component will be delayed delayed until after the pulmonary component okay so you might not tell when you are auscultating you might not tell which component is aortic which is pulmonary but you will appreciate when you ask the patient to take a deep inspiration and then both the uh, components will move as they should normally move the but since they have changed their position by moving in the same direction as they normally do actually the split is narrowed so first there is splitting of second sound reverse splitting of second sound uh, this reverse splitting means during inspiration the split between the first and second is actually narrowed so i hope this you have understood these days we do not take that much trouble to to figure out if that is what is happening because of the availability of echo but if you can do this you can really make the difference you can have edge over your other fellows murmur of aortic stenosis has got some specific features it is systolic ejection murmur it is not pan systolic it is systolic ejection murmur it is loud and harsh usually associated with a thrill and it is best heard on aortic one area which is second intercostal space right to the sternum and it radiates to the neck mostly on the right side but it may radiate to the left side also so if you have a systolic ejection murmur on the base of the heart on the aortic vein area and i think immediately you should auscultate the carotids and if you can hear that murmur going into the neck that would very strongly suggest that this is a case of aortic stenosis then in this murmur increases on expiration Uh, we discussed inspiration earlier in expiration things just happen opposite any murmur which increase which arises from the left side of the heart is likely to increase on expiration so these are the feature i think if you can just figure out a loud systolic ejection murmur heard on the aortic area which radiates to the neck you are i think good enough you will be able to make a diagnosis of aortic stenosis now this is a picture uh, systole and you can see that there is a diamond shaped murmur there is murmur which increases in intensity reaches the peak and then comes back to normal so this is uh, called systolic ejection murmur or it is also called diamond murmur it may also be called crescendo decrescendo murmur crescendo is something which increases the time decrescendo is something which decreases time so it first increases and then decreases then that is why it is called uh, a crescendo decrescendo murmur so depending upon the severity this point the the peak point may actually move earlier and there will be softening this is the aortic component of the second sound this is less tall than the pulmonary component signifying that uh, 
एटोक कॉम्पोनेंट विल बी सॉफ्ट Investigation uh, like in mitral valve disease, I have highlighted. Uh, of course, clinical examination is important. Clinical investigation, and then ECG, you could see left ventricular hypertrophy with strain pattern. XHS may show prominent ascending aorta, or there may be some cardiomegaly, there may be some pulmonary congestion, but it is the echocardiography which actually gives us the diagnosis, the correct diagnosis, and Doppler examination. and cardiac catheterization is generally not done in other valvular diseases but in aortic valve since there is a possibility of concomitant coronary artery disease uh, this the sclerotic process which is affecting the uh, aortic cusp could actually extend into the uh, coronaries and there could be additional arrhythmias changes so i think it is usual practice to do cardiac catheterization to see if there is any concomitant coronary artery disease at the at the time of operation that is also addressed now briefly i think this is a hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy this is the normal heart this you can see there is hypertrophy of the left ventricle but septum is particularly hypertrophied now this would cause obstruction to the left ventricular outflow and this obstruction could vary depending upon left ventricular size the status of hydration the sympathetic tone the usage of drug unlike fixed aortic stenosis this would vary so the some of the symptom sign may be similar but there are some important features which would differentiate it from the uh, aortic valvular stenosis no these are the feature the murmur is the same systolic murmur uh, but it increases on standing if you are auscultating the patient and you have picked up a murmur which is systolic ejection murmur on the aortic area and then while you are auscultating though ask the patient to stand up and see if the murmur increases and then you ask the patient to do valsalva you know valsalva but you ask a patient to close the nose and lips and ex try to exhale forcefully to build up pressure in the chest that is called valsalva and then there is if there is dehydration or if patient is taking some drugs which reduce lift ventricular size all these conditions they are likely to increase the intensity of murmur because all those would actually increase the level of lift ventricular outflow obstruction and the murmur will increase whereas in actual aortic stenosis there is fixed narrowing none of these thing would have any effect on the intensity of the duration of murmur so this is how we differentiate uh, aortic stenosis from uh, hockum then there are certain procedure which can actually reduce uh, the intensity of murmur raising leg for example you are examining the patient and somebody else uh, you ask somebody to raise the legs patient doesn't do it himself because that would uh, cause muscle contraction and then other things some somebody raises the legs passively that would increase venous turn increase venous turn would mean increase ventricular size and that will slightly open up the left ventricular outflow tract well hydration beta blockers reduce heart rate and when are we reduce heart rate then the left ventricular size becomes bigger because the reduced heart rate means more filling and more filling means that the better uh, outflow uh, opening and the beta blocker and verapamil so these are the things which are likely to reduce the murmur and they also help in the treatment uh next is treatment now in aortic stenosis we may give medical treatment and the same i am not going to repeat the same treatment we used to give in patient with aortic in mitral valve disease we try diuretics we we give other stuff and we give endocarditis prophylaxis and um, uh, stuff like that but actual treatment in these patient would be balloon valvulotomy if patient has
uh, aortic well which is narrow but not otherwise grossly calcified or brittle these patients can benefit from balloon valvuloplasty that means catheter is passed and the valve is opened in many others valve replacement would be needed it could be prosthetic valve or it could be biological valve and then in a hypertrophic obstructive cardiopathy you might actually use medication verapamil beta blockers uh, but septoplasty is a procedure as you can see they make this septum little weaker either they remove the shave of some part of the septum or they inject alcohol in the septum or they occlude the coronary vessel to make actually create an infarction to make the septum weaker so some kind of approach is done to reduce the size of septum so that left ventricular outflow tract is opened up so these would constitute the treatment of uh, uh, aortic valve disease and pulmonary stenosis very briefly uh, because it is the same mechanism it is usually congenital unlike aortic stenosis it is usually congenital murmur would have the same features it would be systolic ejection murmur it would be diamond shaped murmur it would be crescendo decrescendo murmur but it would be best heard on p2 which is a second intercostal space on the left of the sternum that that is why where that is where best heard on pulmonary area and no neck radiation because that actually is the one which differentiates it from the uh, murmur of aortic stenosis of course the peripheral features the feature in the pulse and in the blood pressure would be present only in aortic stenosis but sometimes it may be really difficult to differentiate uh, the murmur of pulmonary stenosis from the murmur of aortic stenosis uh, differences are that this murmur would not radiate it would be best on the pulmonary area and would not radiate to the neck and there would be no peripheral features and treatment in pulmonary stenosis is mostly balloon i think because this occurs in in children uh, congenital this is usually amenable to balloon dilatation so that was it we have covered yet another topic in valvular heart diseases and uh, the, I think the only one left is uh, aortic regurgitation and I am very very eagerly looking forward to see you in the next lecture on aortic regurgitation. This is Professor Azizur Rahman from Madistan. Thank you.